Is your blood sugar too high? Would you like to increase your time in the target range and get this nice steady blood sugar line more often? Then keep watching because in this video I'm gonna share with you 6 powerful tips that helped me get my time in range to above 70%. Let's go! Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom, I've been type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel I help you navigate your diabetes journey. To get started, let me tell you why the blood sugar levels and time in range are so important in long term when you are a diabetic. Early studies that were focused on time in range found out that time in range is a very good predictor of long term diabetes complications like eye disease and kidney disease. The higher time in range is, the less complications diabetes patients have. Before we get to the tips how to increase time in range, let me explain to you what exactly time in range is. Time in range or TIR is the percentage of time that you spend with your blood glucose levels in the target range. Guidelines suggest a range of 3.9 to 10 millimole or 70 to 180 milligrams. Over time you might decide to aim for a tighter range such as 4 to 8 millimole or 70 to 140 milligrams. A group of diabetes clinicians and researchers set the bar for people with diabetes at ATTD conference in 2019 and based on their findings type 1 and type 2 diabetics should aim for at least 70% of time spent in their target range. 70% time in target range on average leads to 7% HbA1c and these levels are proved to significantly lower any diabetes complications. Time spent below the target range should not be more than 4% to avoid risks of severe hypoglycemia and we should strive to minimize the time above target range to absolute minimum. These recommended percentages are slightly different for pregnant women and elderly people who no longer feel the hypo. So I will include a link to the full material and any other resources I used for this video in the description below so that you can check them out. But now let's get to the tips I have for you so that you can increase your time spent in range. Please remember I'm a diabetic just like you, I'm not a medical professional and everything I share here is just my personal experience and not medical advice. Tip 1. Test your blood sugar more frequently. Statistically, the more frequently you test, the more information you have about how your body reacts to different factors and the better you can make decisions and small adjustments to continuously increase your time in range. If you have Freestyle Libre, you should aim to scan at least 10 times a day. Statistically, users who scan more achieve significantly better A1C levels than users who scan less, as you can see in the table on the screen now. By the way, recently I asked the viewers of my channel in the community tab how much time they spent in range, and you can see that some of us are doing great and their time in range is above 85%. Congratulations! But most of us are not doing so good because 63% of respondents spent less than 70% of time in range and that's one of the reasons I made this video. Tip 2. Don't forget to take your insulin. Before I had my CGM I sometimes totally forgot to bolus before my meal. And then after, 2 hours after the meal I felt really sick and when I checked my blood sugar I realized I skyrocketed because I totally forgot to bolus before my meal. Now that I use Freestyle Libre it doesn't happen to me so much, but still sometimes I forget to bolus timely which causes unnecessary spikes in my blood sugar and definitely does not help on my way to better timing range. So don't forget to take insulin and bolus timely. Tip number 3. Don't overeat when you are low. We all know that having hypos as a diabetic feels really terrible and we always want it to be gone as soon as possible. And so we don't always follow the general recommendations and the 15-15 rules, which means take 15 grams of quick carbs when you have a hypo and check your blood sugar in 15 minutes. We sometimes ignore this 15-15 rule and eat a lot of quick carbs just to get this nasty feeling away as soon as possible. And this of course causes our blood sugar to explode and go much higher than we would want. I try to stick to this 15-15 rule as much as I can and if I know I overate like crazy, I sometimes even give a small bolus shortly after I ate to avoid too big of a spike in blood sugar. 
but I would definitely not recommend that you do that, especially unless you exactly know what you are doing and you are 100% sure that this is the right thing to do because taking insulin when you are low can be extremely dangerous. Again, this is not a medical advice, so please take it with a grain of salt. This is just my experience and what I do sharing with you. Tip number four, don't overcorrect when you are too high. And I have to admit that I often make this mistake when I'm high because I want my blood sugar to go back to range quickly and I take too much insulin, which of course leads to a hypo and then treating the hypo overeating and this whole cycle of totally unnecessary up and downs starts. What you want to do when your blood sugar is too high is to get back to range within the next three to four hours, not within the next 30 minutes. You want to slowly decline and this you can only achieve when you give the right amount of insulin according to your individual insulin sensitivity factor. My sensitivity is approximately 3.5 millimoles for one unit of insulin. So I know when I'm 12 and my target is five, I need to take two units of insulin to slowly get to my target within the next four hours. When you do that and when you do these corrections, please keep in mind there can be still some active insulin in your body. So always consider any active insulin that has still some work to do in your body before you do the full correction based on your factor. Tip number five is get your insulin to carb ratio right. If your insulin to carb ratio is correct, then your blood sugar three to four hours after eating carbs should return to more or less the same levels to where it was before the meal. This should always be your goal. If you see your post meal blood glucose is elevated, your insulin to carb ratio might be too low. If on the other hand you're struggling with hypos three to four hours after meal, then your insulin to carb ratio might be too high. If you see instances like this, please talk to your diabetes team and try to figure out if your insulin to carb ratio needs to be adjusted. Tip number six, replicate successful days and eliminate what doesn't work. You really want to keep doing things that work. If you have a 100% time in range day, try to imitate it, try to do it again, try to replicate it. If you have a day where you have 50% time in range or even less than 30% time in range, try to figure out what caused it and try to eliminate that thing. And this is easier said than done, I know, but keep working on that and you will see progress and you will see your time in range going higher and higher as you keep working on these things. What works for me and what I try to replicate is plan my day. So for me, if I know what exactly I will be doing, what exactly I will be eating and where I will be eating, then I can adjust my insulin dosage. On the other hand, what does not work for me is eating high carb meals and especially in restaurants. This usually causes spikes in my blood sugar and it's very hard for me to estimate how much insulin to take for these meals. So this is something I try to eliminate. Another thing I try to eliminate is extreme physical activity. So I try to stick to my usual physical activity. I try to do a 45 minute run. I try to do a 45 minute uh, cardio workout. And these activities, I know exactly how to adjust my dosage and I know exactly how to stay in range. Another great tool to increase your time in range is pre-bolusing. Click on the video on the screen now to learn more about it or click here to watch another video of mine. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you want more diabetes tips and hacks and I will see you in the next Type 1 Talks video. Ciao!